We give you glory, Lord, as we worship you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. We give you glory. circumstances in Nigeria, overcomes all that is going on globally, refreshing manner overcomes. We are grateful. Blessed be your name in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are in our midst this morning. You say wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. Thank you because you are in our midst. We magnify you, be exalted. Thank you for your covenant of refreshing. And every time we gather, it will be a time of refreshing. Thank you because for everyone on ground online, it's another time of refreshing. Our lives will not remain the same. Our lives will move forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the theme of today's meeting, the prize for the next level. As we open our eyes of understanding. And as we pray the prize, we pray every member of this ministry will move forward. We will move to the next level. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Because Refreshing Manor as a group will go to the next level. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for everyone you have sent to this assignment. We thank you for the president. We thank you for the choir. We thank you for the prayer unit. We thank you for everyone, the media, the organizers, the protocol, the ushers, everyone whose heart you have stirred up to contribute their quota to this work. Today we lift our voices to say we do not take anyone here for granted. We are grateful. We are grateful for the gift of men. We are grateful. Blessed be your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into the Bible study, we pray that you open our eyes of understanding. Bible says your word is new every day. We have come across this topic before, but we ask for newness. Lord, we ask that you open our eyes to see it in a new way and that our hearts be enlightened and our lives move forward by the reason of the light. In the name of Jesus, shine your light upon our lives, O God, and help us to shine to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. You may please be seated. You are all welcome to this meeting. Thank you. If you are here for the first time, can you please wave your hands? Wave. My brother, you are welcome. Let's clap for him. Let's appreciate God in his life. 
thank you for coming. We are grateful to see your face. We appreciate you. Thank you. The topic for this Bible study is the prize giving day. Can you please look at your program? And the section for the Bible study is the prize giving day. Last month, we started a study on reward of serving God, which was tagged, God is the rewarder. And we emphasize the fact that God is just. So because God is just, he's not going to cheat you. He's going to reward you for playing the drums, even though I appreciate you. Yes. He's going to reward you for the media. He's going to reward you for everything you're doing for his name's sake. Every, even if you just behave nicely to someone because of Jesus. The Bible says if you give someone a cup of water, he will reward you for that cup of water. Do you remember that scripture? Okay, Mark 9, 41. So that tells us that whatever you do for a child of God, whatever you do for the sake of the kingdom of God, God is going to reward you for it. We also discussed last month that the reward that God will give us is not general. I remember when I was growing up in my church, we used to sing Yoruba songs that could know that God will reward all of us. And I thought it would just be the same price, like a little token. Thank you, all of you. Thank you for serving me. No. What God will give us is a salary. Can you please say salary or wages? In your office, does everybody receive the same salary? That is in your business, everybody selling gas, do they get the same profit? What determines their profit? Their efforts. So if you sit at home and say gas business is very good and you don't put effort, you don't go out, you may not get as much profit as somebody who is always on the run. So what we are saying is that when you serve God, it's not a little token that he will give all of us. He's going to reward us based on what we do, like a salary or like a wage. Daily workers receive wages. And the word that is used to describe God's reward for Christians is wage. It's the same word as wages for somebody who has done uh, something for another person and is being rewarded for the work. So we establish the fact that some of our rewards will be here on earth. It's not only in heaven. Another group of Christians believe that it's when we get to heaven, that's where we get our reward. But we discussed last week and established that according to Exodus 23:25 and other scriptures, it's established that while we're here on earth, a lot of advantages and benefits will accrue to us because we serve God. It says, you shall serve the Lord your God, Exodus 23, 25, and he shall bless your bread and your water. He shall take sickness away from the midst of you. So that scripture helps us to know that prosperity is attached to serving God. Somebody may be wondering, but there are richer people who don't serve God. Just wait there. It's not measured only the way we human beings measure prosperity. So if you want to know more about that, please pick up my book on wealthy and godly. And you see how Christians can prosper. Then the other thing is for us to know that these benefits do not stop here. Please, if you want to know more about God is a Rewarder, check our YouTube. You will see the video on God is a Rewarder. Either refreshing manner or polu or latona. You would also uh, read from today's newsletter the benefits of serving God in an expanded fashion compared to what I will be doing this morning. This morning, I want to concentrate on the fact that though God will reward us here on earth, there is more in heaven stored for us. And that is on this prize giving day. So I'm talking about that prize giving day that will occur in heaven. When you read your Bible and you see the day, that day, 
He's talking about one particular day. And that one particular day is the day of judgment. So that day is the prize giving day, the day of judgment. And I'm talking about the judgment seat of Christ, not the great white throne judgment. We've done a study on end time events before. We'll, we'll revisit that study again later. But for today, suffice it to just know that there are two types of judgment. The great white throne judgment is the judgment between Christians and non-Christians to decide you go to hell, you go to heaven. That's the great white throne judgment where you see multitudes. But this morning I'm talking about the second type of judgment which is the judgment seat of Christ. And that occurs when we all get to heaven. Those of us that we get to heaven, when we get there, there will be a second judgment. That judgment is the judgment of giving people rewards. And that's what I'm referring to as the prize giving day. The inspiration that gave me this topic is what happened to me when I was in secondary school. When I was in secondary school, people used to make fun of me. Efiko, ah, bookworm, you read too much. Ah, ah, always buried in books. Is it that you are reading academics or you are reading storybook and a lot of jesting here and there? But on the prize giving day, I got a lot of awards, a lot of prizes several subjects. I will be the best in several subjects. And as a, and I've been called out, before I get back to my seat, my name will be called again. Some of the people that will watch this video later are some of my classmates in secondary school. So they will tell you on social media whether I'm telling lies or it's true. But you know what happened? Immediately after we leave the all after the speech and prize giving day and we are going, people will now come and be meeting me. For look at, can I be your friend? Can I be your reading partner? Can I be? And then on, on the day of Valentine, ah, be my Val, be my Val, I want to be your Val. And I will be getting all sorts of invitation to be their Val, to be their school si sister, invitation, please be my school sister. Some parents will also come and meet me. You know, parents will be there on speech and prize giving day. Please, can my daughter be your school daughter? So I asked school daughters, and I used to collect a lot of cornflakes <laughs> and go to them and write scripts as extra award apart from the prize on the prize giving day. So what am I telling you this morning? Some people may look at you now and feel, ah, ah, you are a fico. This one, are you the one that killed Jesus? You are in the choir. You are in the prayer band. The same you, organizer, Abba. And sometimes the devil may want to, to even feel as if you are behind. No. There's going to be another prize giving day. And on that day we will know who is wise and who is not wise. Because God is going to reward you at Bima. That judgment seat of Christ is what is called Bima. God will reward you based on what you have done. So my message is this. Please be steadfast immovable. Always abandon in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain. Even if I have not reached heaven, I know it serves to pay God. So I know that what God has said we will get in heaven is true. God has rewarded me in different ways here on earth. So I believe his word that for serving him for the past 37 years or thereabout I will get a lot of reward. One day I met a, a redeemed pastor. I went to preach in a redeemed church and she looked at me and said, ah, Folu, ah, your reward will be plenty in heaven. Oh, you know what? I'm struggling, trying my best, try serving him day and in every way I can so that I can catch up. Many of you need to catch up. Some people started serving God at age 12, started organizing crusades at age 12. Do you think you have the same prize with them? They are still begging you, stop smoking. Somebody is still begging you, stop drinking. Oh, I am born again, I'm in the church. Let me just say amen and I'm okay. No, you are missing a lot. You better start now because the clock is ticking, it's recording. When did you start serving God? And even when you started, how much are you doing? 
We are all serving God at different ways, different levels. So I want to encourage you, remember that you will be rewarded based on what you have done. And of course, length of time can help you to do a lot. So double up if you started late. The first question or the first point to discuss on the outline is how you spend the moments here on earth determine eternal reward. That's the first thing you should think about. Oh, some of you on Saturdays, you can't joke with your Saturday, oh, what is refreshing man? I know you can't go there. Or oh, sometimes you come once in a while, you feel, ah, I can't come all the time. Or oh, do you read your Bible every day? What if God gives you instruction? How much of it do you carry out? How do you live your life? Everything you are doing, obeying the word of God. Some people obey the word of God. Some people say, oh, leave me alone, leave me alone. That's how I am. Stop uh, harassing your wife. Ah, that's how I am. That's how I am. Uh, and she should just adjust to me. A day is coming. A day of reckoning. That you, you, you will see what you are losing. By, that, by not obeying that word of God. To deal with your wife gently. And if you are a wife, you are, your mouth is also very sharp. If your husband say one, you say three. A day of reckoning is also coming. That you will see what you would have gained by just obeying the word of God to adapt to your husband and have a peaceful family. How you spend every moment counts. That's what we're discussing now. And I want you to think of it in different ways. You will be rewarded based on what to do on this earth. That's the point. Can you look at Revelation chapter 22 verse 12? Can you read Revelations 22, 12? Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. So that establishes the fact that God is saying, I mean, Jesus is saying right there, that he is coming back. And when he comes back, he will come with reward. Can anybody uh, tell us what is the significance of that point? How does, how sh what should, should it do to us? The fact that Jesus is coming with a, his reward, what should it make us do? Even if it means repeating what I've said, just say something. The fact that Jesus Christ is coming back with his reward, how sh what should it make us do? Thank you. We should remain focused on him, obeying his word, and serving him. We will be rewarded based on what to do on this earth. And the Bible says this earth is passing away. Have you read that in your Bible before? Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. Behold, I see a new heaven and a new earth. Continue reading. I see a new heaven. <laughs> I see a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Even the sea is no more. So that means everything on this earth will melt away. All the houses. So if you live your life to amass houses alone or buy another car, you can't drive three, you can't even drive two at a time. So if that's what you are living for, just to buy this and buy that, build this, and you are not doing anything for God. You need to think this scripture is saying that all you are living for will pass away, it will melt away. Then you now face the consequence of living forever and never and never based on your work that has been destroyed. So if everything you are doing on this earth is physical and is going to be destroyed, then that means when we get to heaven, you have nothing to show because we are only living for something that can be destroyed. And if you have nothing to show, you have nothing to be rewarded for. Now listen, our reward in heaven is not just a crown you put on your head and you are smiling like we have always learned. Those crowns represent treasures. They represent emblem of a king. 
They represent what a king needs to rule. You know, if a king is coming on his throne, he will sit on the throne, he will also wear the crown. To do what? To do his work as a king. So if you get there and you don't have any crown, can you rule? Talk to me. So the reward we will get in heaven will help you to serve God more in heaven. Or when we come back to the air, I just don't want to go into those details. But let's just say the reward you get after this life will also help you to serve God more. So if you think those rewards, say, well, some people say, let me just make heaven. I don't really care about reward. Some people are going to hell now. So if I can just make heaven, that's enough. It's not enough. Have you read in your Bible before that God will wipe away tears from some people's faces? Do you know why? Because they won't earn any reward. So they will be, they will have to, they will cry. God will have to wipe away their tears. I, I will not be one of them in Jesus' name. The next point I like to say under that is though this earth is passing away, you must reign and glorify God. So I had already explained that the earth is passing away, so don't concentrate on it too much. But some Christians will take it to another extreme and say, ah, everything will melt, oh, why do I need to work hard? Ah, since everything will melt, do I really need to build a house? The house will no longer be when Jesus Christ comes back. You shouldn't live your life like that. That's not what God has told us to do. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Romans 5 17. For if by the trespass of one man, by the sin of one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ? Read that scripture again and say something from that verse. I'm waiting for you to contribute. Looking at that scripture, should we live our lives anyhow? Because everything will melt away. That scripture is saying that death reigned through one man. He reigned to everybody. But when Jesus Christ came, he gave us abundant provision of grace. Just leave the gift of righteousness for now. But just see, he gave us abundant provision of grace to reign in life. Jesus Christ gave us abundant provision of grace to reign in life. So if we have been given abundant provision of grace to reign in life, should you live a life of mediocrity because everything will melt away? No. We should still work hard. We should reign in life. We should make provisions for our lives, our family, live a good life because God has given us abundant provision of grace. He has given us the gift of righteousness to be in right standing with him. So we can, through, we can labor with grace to get everything we need to reign in life. If you got that point, shout hallelujah. We have grace to, to labor with, not just to labor as an ordinary man and be suffering. We can labor under grace, work hard with the grace of God and meet our needs on earth and reign not like a mediocre, not like a poor man just because we are going to heaven. So you shouldn't be one of those people that will sing, it's not an easy road, we are traveling to heaven. No, my own road is easy. I can't hear you. Is you are you traveling on the very difficult road? Is your choice? You yes, narrow is the way that leads to heaven, but God did not say it's very difficult. It can be narrow. Narrow means that only few of us will get there. Narrow means that it's not broad, it's not Bobo road, it's not everybody. But it doesn't have to be difficult for you. Some Christians believe all kinds of things. Please watch what you believe because your life will be a reflection of what you believe. So while you are here on earth, you must live a good life because there is abundant provision of grace for you to prosper. What's the next point on your outline? 
maintain a balance. What do you understand by that? Why you are here on earth? We know that whatever we do, our work, our labor will be rewarded in heaven. So we are not concentrating on this earth. It's just like someone, a young girl who spends ten, uh, three hours to bathe and do makeup and 30 minutes to read. Is the girl wise? No. Is it bad to do makeup? No. You need to take your bath, wear your level of makeup that you want and look good. But it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be lopsided. So what do you think that maintaining balance means? Can you please look at Matthew 19:21? Matthew 19:21. Matthew 22:37 to 39. Matthew 25:9. Matthew 22:37 to 39. I like you to please read. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind. Number one instruction. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. Thou shalt love your neighbor more than yourself. Is that what is in your Bible? As yourself. So, but some Christians practice thou shalt love your neighbor more than yourself. So they expend their energy, their money recklessly. That's not what the Bible is commanding us to do. So as you give, you're transferring resources to heaven. As you serve God, you are transferring resources to heaven to build your crown, to build your house, to build your treasure in heaven. But while you are doing that, you must be wise to take care of your life so that you maintain a balance. Is that clear? Number two, all Christians will appear at the judgment seat of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 12 to 15. 1 Corinthians 3, 12 to 15. I've not heard you uh, read any scripture. You've been allowing me to read all. Are you in 1 Corinthians 3? Okay, verse 10. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take it how he builds. So Paul is speaking here that as a wise master builder, he has built the foundation of some people's lives. And then he now handed over these churches, Philippians, Corinthians, Ephesians, Colossians, he built them. He preached to them. He laid the foundation of their Christian lives. Then he handed them over to some shepherds to take care of them. And he's warning them. At least this one specifically to the Corinthians church. He says, if anyone, because there were a lot of different kinds of ministers that rose up in the Corinthians church saying different funny, funny things. And many of them feeling big, thinking that because they were rich, then they were better than Paul and all of that uh, funny, funny behaviors. He said, if anyone builds on this foundation, using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, a straw, their work will be shown for what it is. Because the day, can you see the day here? Say the day, the prize giving day, will bring it to light. If anyone builds on this foundation with different material, whatever material you, you like, be using it now. If you are serving God, you are serving, it, serving God with laziness. You are serving God haphazardly. You are not organized. You are not diligent. You are using a material that's likely to be wood or straw or a that will burn easily. He said that day it will be revealed with fire. The fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burnt up, the builder will suffer loss. But you're already in heaven anyway. So since you have made heaven, we'll congratulate you for making heaven. But the work of your hands, everything you are doing for God, will pass through fire, be tested. So we can see from this scripture, three things that will happen at the judgment seat of Christ. What's the first one? From this scripture... We are doing Bible study. What's the first thing that will happen at that judgment seat of Christ? 
the day will bring your work to light. So that day, your work will show. Somebody might look at Tofumi and may not know that you are serving God. It might not really show. But that day, we will discover that apart from drawing me, you always pray for me. Is it a work for God? Is it a work for God? So that day, the work will show that, oh, that young man at the drum, you mean he was the person that prayed more for Dr. Folu Alatono to succeed in refreshing manner assignment? The, that day is the day we will all know because we can't see you in your bedroom now where you are praying. So that day we reveal your work. Oh, you are the one that comes early before 9 a.m. to clean all these chairs. All the people that came at 10, they don't know you. But that day we show. So that day we show the eating works that we are doing for God. What's the next thing that will happen? It will be revealed by fire. So can you please, that word revealed, can you give it another word and say it to be tested by fire? So when we see the work, maybe your work looks very big like this structure, looks very big like that auditorium. That's the way your work looks. And everybody's already clapping for you. Hey, see, see his work is very big. It's bigger than my own. God will say, calm down, calm down, calm down. Let's pass it through fire. Then the work passes through fire. God forbid. Some big, that is to be your own work. Some big, big works that human beings have celebrated. Ah, he's the best pastor in town. He has the largest church. You should just pass through the fire. And everything burns. Some is looking like me do work. It doesn't look too big. It passes through the fire and it stays. It remains big, but not as big as the first one. So when the work passes through fire, that's the second thing that takes place at Bima. What's the third thing? The fire tries it. Some will be burnt up. Then what happens? Some will survive the fire and be rewarded. I pray that you will not lose your reward. Your works will be rewarded in the name of Jesus. So that's the third thing that happens at Bima. Then the third point on the outline is the test. The test. The rules of the race. The rules of the race are the test. So can you look at 2 Timothy 2.5? 2 Timothy 2.5 Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. Have you seen that in your Bible? Except by competing at the rules. So anybody who does not compete according to the rules, what happens? The work will be burnt by fire. So these rules we we'll just go through them quickly. The first one is John 15, 5. The first rule. So when God is testing the work in heaven by fire, the first rule that will be checked. Okay, this big work that this person did. John 15, 5. Let us pass through this test. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. This work that he did, was he abiding in me when doing it? Was he always in good relationship with me? The work will pass through. If he's the kind of pastor that just likes to preach and preach, will not go back and spend more time in the presence of God, or a music minister that will sing, you will sing here, you go and sing in another place, you've not gone back to the presence of God, you've not maintained your relationship with him, or you are in the choir, you don't even plant, you don't pray, you don't fast, you don't, you don't study the word of God before you come to sing. They say, ah, relationship with God, zero. The work is burnt. The second test, Matthew 6, 1 and 5. Take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. They say, ah, all the giving that he was giving, was he doing it just to glorify God or so that people will praise him? If it's to be seen by men that is good, is doing great works, what will happen to the work? I can't hear you. Burnt by fire. The next test, 1 Corinthians 9, 17. 
For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. If I do this willingly, I have a reward. That's the second test. I mean, that's another test. So what is the test there? Willingly. Did you do it willingly or your father coerced you? It's because my mom wanted me to be there. Then he said that work is burnt. What is the next test? First Corinthians 13, 3. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. So we pass, the work will pass through the test of what? Love. So if you do it just because you want to boast, I remember giving the story of a certain pastor. Somebody called him from outside the country one day and said, Pastor, Pastor, do you have a car? Do you have a car? He said, no, I don't have a car. He said, okay. Later, he now understood what happened. That guy was in a meeting of his friends and all the friends were boasting. I gave out a car to a pastor in Nigeria last week. The other one said, oh, last month I gave a car to a pastor. So this particular guy did not have anything to boast of. So he quickly ran out to call his pastor friend and immediately that one agreed, okay, I'll give you a car. I'll give you a car. Then he came back and said, yeah, me too. I'm going to give a car to a pastor next week. Will that work attract any reward? Because he did it just to boast. Somebody will give you what belongs to you, even if it's to boast in Jesus' name. The last point on the outline. Reward. Our treasure in heaven will be real. Will be precious. Will be highly desirable and useful. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. That's the last scripture we're reading. Matthew 6, 19. Don't stop for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy. Can you please put your attention, place your attention on the word treasure. It says don't store your treasure here on earth. That means we store treasures here on earth. And then in verse 20, it says, store up for yourselves treasure in heaven. So the point I want to make before we round up this Bible study is that when you give, whether you're giving money or your energy or your service or your gift to God, you are transferring, you are storing up treasures in heaven. And the treasures are real treasures. So people think when we get to heaven, we just sing and worship. So whatever you are transferring will not even be desirable. No. The Bible says it's his treasure. It's the same word translated to treasure while on earth is the same word translated to treasure when we get to heaven. Do you understand? It will be great treasure. Something that is highly desirable. And I pray you will not miss yours in the name of Jesus. Can we pray? Pray for yourself that God will help you to lay hold on every opportunity to serve him. Every opportunity to preach the gospel. Every opportunity to give in Jesus mighty name we pray father we thank you for your word this morning thank you for teaching us about the eternal reward we pray that on that prize giving day we will not cry but we will win many rewards our work will not be burnt up in Jesus mighty name we pray and be lifted up, O oh, oh, Zana, O oh, Zana, O oh, Zana. Oh, Zana.